picture yourself making beer somewhere within the last 20,000 years, which you know scientists think that's about how old beer is. What would you have around you? How would you actually turn that into beer? You would have to use nature. Humans figured out somewhere down the line that if we take unfermented beer and just expose it to the elements, it will start to ferment. It's just nature finding a way. A lot of brewers are outdoor people, so they, they get out into nature a lot and they want to preserve what's there. People talk about sustainability like it's some political thing. Whether you're Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, you probably drink beer. Beer is one of these things that just brings people together. We want breweries that will last for 100 years. So everything we're doing as an industry has to do with making sure that the resources that create this great beer are sustained. You just basically need grains, clean water, and yeast to make beer. It sounds simple, but it's really not. The brewing industry is incredibly resource intensive. Lots of water, lots of power consumption, lots of agricultural product consumption. We've pushed ourselves to try to be stewards to protect our forests and the water. So we all need clean water generally, but we need clean water for, for good beer right. too. A more modern brewery like like this one, it's about three to one gallons of water in to beer out. Older breweries can be closer to the nine to one ratio. Breweries who are able to minimize the amount of water that they have to create can really not only save a lot of money, also do something better for the environment. Anything that we don't use in the process, we recirculate and reuse. We did a wastewater challenge, took wastewater and treated it so it was potable again. It pumped it into a tank and brewed a beer with it. It's a little bit of a, a dance, deciding how much water to add on. We don't want to add too much water because then that dilutes our gravity too much right. and also creates a lot of waste. Finding where that line is and stopping just before it is what's going to get us the maximum savings on our water. The BrowCon brew system tracks everything, and so we're able to hit things on the nose, have them do exactly what we want. It saves thousands of gallons every year. Traditionally, the water ton, which is like almost like a drip coffee maker, you have the, the, the liquids collected and you rinse them out. We have embraced the mash filter press, which is like an espresso machine. It actually presses out all of the goodness. We use less water. We use less energy to dry the grain, that which ends up becoming our fuel. The wastewater treatment facility is out behind our brewery. We filter out the solids, and the solids are used for biofuel that fuels the micro turbine as it's coupled with the solar array. Those two things combined uh, help produce a portion of our electricity. Power generation is a huge thing. Most of our power is consumed in this building, either heating water up to brew beer or cooling beer down to make it ferment. Both consume a lot of power. We signed on as the very first business in the state of Utah in 2001 to a wind power program that was developed by Rocky Mountain Energy. And thus the slogan, Earth, Wind and Beer, became a part of our folklore. We were able to qualify for a grant to do uh, solar power. And so we jumped on that to power our brewery, 100% independent of the grid. I was like, wow, is solar really going to work in West Virginia? Yeah, we were a little like, Elkins, I think, is maybe the second rainiest city in the country or something. It's amazing the efficiency of the panels these days. We'll add under 48 panels. That'll almost produce, in the summer months, all the electricity we need. Heat is a resource that is produced actually naturally from the brewing process. If we can capture that heat, it's an efficiency and it's also more sustainable. During the boil, we're creating a lot of steam because we are boiling the wort. The steam in a typical brewing situation, maybe a smaller system, would normally just let the steam go out the stack to the atmosphere. We're actually able to recapture that steam and use it to heat water for another part of the process. We use our own waste stream to create our beer. We replaced 50% of our fossil fuel use with spent grain as our primary fuel. We didn't have agricultural uses for it, mm -hmm. per se, and it's paid for itself. When you can turn your waste into fuel and you don't have to use diesel, it doesn't get any better than that. We're actually a certified zero waste facility, which means um, that about 99.8% of our waste is actually diverted from the landfill. Most companies, they take something, they make something, they waste it. And we think take, make, and remake is prudent. Good planets are hard to find, right? How I grew up was wanting to be responsible. First things that we did was uh, started composting our hops 
and other byproducts, fruit, things like that, and also uh, spent grain going to farms. Recently, we've replaced a lot of our carbon dioxide consumption with liquid nitrogen. The liquid nitrogen that we get is actually produced by a plant that extracts a lot of very rare gases out of the atmosphere. They end up actually venting a lot of extra nitrogen because they collect too much. We're just consuming um, what they don't need. What they don't need. We try to shift most of our packaging as possible towards aluminum because it's infinitely recyclable. They're compostable, biodegradable ring holders. Uh, so we wanted to focus on something that if it ended up in the water, in our lakes, in our streams, in the ocean, that it would actually be fish food. Brewers, because we're ultimately an extension of the agriculture industry, we have a very keen sense and sensitivity towards the energy we consume and giving back to production and agriculture. All of our spent grain, once we're done pulling the sugar to make work, we send out to the farm, feed the cows, and then when the cows get processed, we'll use the meat from the cows yes. and it'll be this nice little loop. We actually have a farmer down the road that's a dairy farmer. So they get our grains and then our food truck on site uses their milk to make ice cream. We use the spent grain after our brew process to make dog treats. I do events all over the state. And if I show up anywhere without dog treats, like I'll get like, like blasphemy. People <laughs> want the dog treat so bad. What we've been trying to do recently is source more local. Right now we have the ability to source raw wheat from just right down the road. We're trying to build a connection to farmers, and so they're actually planning their production off of our production. Potato farmers, and what a lot of people don't know is that they plant barley every other year on their potato right. fields because barley plants nutrients into the ground. What's been awesome with the growth of the craft beer industry is now their rotational crop is now a cash crop. We've seen farms that have been around for five generations, now seeing this connection to the craft beer community, getting excited about what could be with the future of their farm. We just knew we wanted to make uh, good beer. We wanted to focus on farmhouse ales. As far as like finding a, an actual ranch to build a farm brewery, we didn't see any of that coming our plan over time is to slowly restore uh, native prairie lands, bring back the natural springs on, on the land. Goats play the biggest part of that. And the poor soil that we have, they're able to target a lot of the native varieties that aren't helping us really collect water. They're able to aerate the soil and then deposit nutrients back into it, building up the soil over time. People do want to drink beer and look at goats, yeah. for sure. I have a rare breed called Guernsey goats, and they have a very high butterfat content, so oh, they're really good with yields nice for cheese rich. making. She's in charge of the cheese and the goats. I'm in charge of the beer. Kids seeing the goats for the first time, I see as an opportunity to teach the children about farming and agriculture. Getting to come and experience the baby goats, hear the birds, and, and see all the flowers, uh, hopefully can to create some core memories for them to understand why it's important to try to conserve the land. The reasons behind sustainability, and we do it for our kids just as much, but I think if you can show a successful business with successful policies and programs, you can be sort of a, a beacon for people to say, look, you can run a successful company while keeping good environmental ethics. It used to be that breweries were as important part of the culture of a city, like its sports teams, its newspapers, its politics. And so when the last brewery closed, we thought that there was a hole in the culture of the city. We have a lot of breweries that open up downtown on their main street where the mill shut down mm -hmm. and it's been vacant, all the storefronts are vacant. The brewery opens up there, all of a sudden a coffee shop opens up, a bike shop opens up, a restaurant opens up. They've often been that harbinger of growth that's really made the difference in getting a town back on its feet. We're not just in the community, we're part of the community and so giving back to our employees and giving back to the city is hugely important. Even in a downtown neighborhood that just needed a little love, when you spread that kind of economic impact around and you have it on a main street in a farming community, it's really creating opportunity all around. Sometimes the same people come in every week, but I mean, you got people from all over the country that come in and then they add to our little circle of people and it, it just makes it a happier place. And beer makes that happen. All of these people, they know each other. They know what their kids' names are, when their birthdays are. When something happens in town, we're always happy to 
get on board and do fundraisers or help in any way possible. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the community. So, I mean, that's the biggest part. That whole ethos of working hard, being independent, staying true to the city that, that grew you uh, means a lot to a lot of people. It's shared values of us and the people around us that have built us. And that's sort of what sustainability, the essence of it is, is if you take care of all those little 1% things, they do you know, ultimately add up to be something big. Most of us have kids or have next generation that we care about and we know it's the right thing to do and why not do it while we're making beer.